Hello and welcome to this workshop number five, and it's the last in the uh, mentorship program, Vernwell Space for All Womankind. After more than four months, we wrap up. And the cycle will be over after this workshop, and hopefully we will start start the next cycle after the new year. Today's workshop, we are very honored and happy to have Mr. Dan Hawke uh, with us, a guest of honor. Mr. Hawke, can you please introduce yourself to the public? Because I always believe that no one will introduce the person, the expert, as himself. Uh, my name is Dan Hawke. Again, I'm Oneida. I'm Iroquois Confederacy. I'm former Army and Navy, and I served in fast attack submarines, uh, so I have a nuclear background. I uh, worked with uh, space grants uh, in the United States, uh, would be um, specifically Montana and Wisconsin space grants. Um, I operated and, uh, and supported and launched uh, BisonSat 2015 on a, na a National Reconnaissance Office uh, 55 mission, so it's the first tribal um, satellite in, in orbit. Started the First Nations launch and tethered aerostat program with, uh, with Dr. Eileen Yingst uh, from Wisconsin Space Grant. I am a NASA NOAA Department of Energy carbon expert. I made and sent one ton of carbon uh, to Bikini Atoll in support of the Marshallese people to mitigate radio cesium-137 uh, in their plants uh, and their, their food. And I'm an Amazon Black Earth expert. So I do a lot of carbon work. Uh, so most of my work is with the Department of Energy, NASA, NOAA, and uh, um, and for, for Native American nations and basically anything that has everything to do with carbon climate change, especially the Dust Bowl era, um, working with that as well. The things that we need here on Earth are the same things that we're going to need in space. We're going to need to have our basic needs. We're going to need food, water, shelter. Uh, we're going to need, you know, some um, comfort, those kinds of things. And so we'll be talking about that. What can we learn from the Iroquois people? So we understand when we, years ago, when we were together as a, as a confederacy, there were certain things that we did to, to survive and to, and to be sustainable. And so as a Native American community, those are the, the sustainable ideas we'll be taking with us to space. We'll, we'll be transferring those to space. And so we're going to be talking about those. We'll look at the moon and Mars. We need the same things. We need, we need, we need, uh, you know, space suits. You know, we need that be, be warm. Uh, we have to have shelter. We have to have food. We have to have water. Um, so those, those basic needs need to be met. So when we look at cross-training, uh, I, I believe that is really the educational tool that's necessary to create sustainability in space. Eagle Houston is decent to fuel to monitor over. Altitude 13,005, velocity 9,100 feet per second. Made it uh, switch over time, please. You're... Roger, stand by. You're looking great at eight minutes. Thank you so much for the insightful reply and the answer. It's um, really first time I hear this perspective. <laughs> Because we hear a lot about carb the problem of uh, burning coal and uh, energy that it's uh, coal based energy, it's uh, not sustainable and we need to move from it and uh, uh, get a cleaner uh, energy. But actually what you said is the way how it's burned matter. Today we are trying to look for more sustainable energy and there's a lot of investments need to be invested into different kind of energy like, uh, for example, uh, in Europe, some countries, they moved from the nuclear energy and the investment they invested already to uh, prepare for the nuclear plants. Then because of the issue happened with the accidents with, you know, what happened in the past. Uh, like I know Italy, they uh, invested a big amount of money for nuclear energy. Then after that, with political reasons, they just set aside and they moved uh, away from the nuclear energy. And now it's very important to find a way because actually it's going to be a problem and big crisis in Europe. And uh, yeah, it's time to think at uh, in, in a different perspective and different ways and listen to um, experts like yourself. So thank you so much, Dan. Yes. It was great to have you